What's up guys? Today we've got something I'm excited to check out. This is Perlison's D15s. So shout out to Perlison for sending this over for me to review. So this comes wrapped in a nice bag, just like the bigger one. And there we have it. This is the same driver on the D215, except we only got one this time. You get the nice little Perlison logo on the bottom. Nice driver up front. I should also mention that these do not come with grills, so there are no grills for any of these subwoofers. So it is that as it is. If you got kids or something like that, maybe don't let them get close to it because they might poke the fingers or you might accidentally kick it or something like that. This as well is also a THX Dominus certified subwoofer. There are three EQ curves for this, three presets. There's the THX mode, which goes down to 20 hertz. There is the large room mode, which goes down to 16 hertz. And then there's the small room mode, which goes down to 24 hertz. And you can access that setting, or all the settings, up top with the two and a half inch LCD touchscreen. But size wise, we are looking at 20 and a half inches wide by 19 and a half inches deep by 19 and a half inches tall. So it is almost a perfect 20 inch square. This is powered by a 2000 watt amplifier. You get your service port, trigger, unbalanced RCAs, balanced XLRs, the main power switch, and then the power inlet. And again, this is THX Dominus certified. Okay, so this is just one of them. I only unboxed the one, but I actually have two of these in for review. Let's go ahead, get this thing set up, and I'll come back, give you some thoughts and impressions. I'm gonna be placing the D15s in my theater one in the front left corner and the other in the opposite right rear corner. I'm gonna be pairing them with PSB PWM on-wall speakers. Everything is hooked up to a Trinal Altitude processor and I'll be playing demos off of a Kaleidoscape and a Zipedi media player. I'm gonna be turning off the room correction in the Trinov and using the subwoofer's built-in DSP to get the best response for my space. So now let's take a quick look at some of the settings built into the subwoofers. To access the subwoofer settings, you'll have to download an app that's available on both Android and iOS. In the upper right corner in the app settings, there's language, app version, and an about us page. Back on the main page, there's a group function, which will volume gain attenuate according to the number of subs to the THX reference level. You can adjust the master volume from a negative 20 to a plus 12. And on the bottom, you can see that I've got three subwoofers hooked up. It'll give you the name of each one and how they're connected, which is via XLR, as you can see here in the green. Tapping on the icon to the right will bring you into the D15 settings. The first section is the EQ mode, which we went over earlier. Next is trim, which you can choose between negative 2.5 and plus 3. Under crossover, you can turn that on and off from here. Choose a slope from 6 dB to 24. Adjust the crossover from 160 down to 30 Hz. There's a phase adjustment from 0 to 270. Time delay from 0 to 100 milliseconds. And you can change the polarity to positive or negative. The next section is PEQ, which you can turn on and off. You can adjust the frequency band from 16 to 200 Hz, change the Q from 0.3 to 20, adjust the gain from negative 20 to plus 3, and you do have 10 bands with 3 memory presets. So you should have no problems getting this dialed into your system. The next section is the input control. You can specify which input will turn on the subs. Use a 12 volt trigger per input and adjust the gain from a negative 6 to a plus 6 for the RCA and XLR inputs. Under setup, you can choose between 60 minutes and 5 minutes before the subs turn off. Adjust the auto on sensitivity between low, medium, and high. Adjust the LCD brightness. Check the firmware version. And the last option is reset all. And that is it for all of these settings. First demo we're going to check out is Ready Player One. It's got a ton of bass between 20 and 40 hertz. Clearly a YouTube video isn't going to do justice to the amount of bass these belt out. 
This has got a great mixture of heavy mid-bass growl from the engines, heavy impact from the explosions, and King Kong shows up at the end to fill in the deep bottom end while he's jumping off buildings. The D-15s have got this heavy, thick pressurized feeling about them that you could cut with a knife, especially when you hear the cars driving by. It's extremely clean without the lumpy bloat you might get with a lower end subwoofer. When things would explode, there's an immediate wallop of pressure that made my drywall vibrate. Now I will say that coming from the D212s, I felt that those were a bit quicker on the attack, but only by touch. The D15s I felt had a slightly heavier presence, which I kind of like more for these big action movies. Next we're going to pop on Fury. It's got a Dolby Atmos track that's heavy around 30 to 35 hertz. Like I said earlier, I felt the D212s had a more immediate reaction when the machine guns and tanks would blast away. The D15s came at it with a heavier hand, which made the initial impact feel like getting hit by a car rather than a jackhammer. One thing that the D15s shared with the D212s is the ability to pick up on low delicate nuances in the bottom end. Jerry took him out. So, anti-tank guns there, there, possibly there, I don't know. I need you to rest my guys. Take the guns out. Without a subwoofer, you wouldn't even know there were tanks in the background. These picked up the low-level harmonics that will expand your soundstage several feet behind your speakers. And to cap off the demos, let's pop on the subwoofer killer, Edge of Tomorrow on Blu-ray. It's got a DTS HD mix that dips down into the single digits. For a fairly smallish enclosure, I was getting some skin tingling pressure. I didn't think these were going to go as low as the D212s, but they certainly did. I do believe the 212s played louder, but the 15s were no slouches. Now I did take a few measurements at my main listening seat. Keep in mind that these are the responses I got in my space, so I'm sure they're going to be greatly different for yours. The first one is the response I got for the front left sub. I got a peak at 20 hertz and it starts dropping off at 10 hertz. The second is the back subwoofer. I've got a peak around 20 hertz and it starts dropping off at 8. Now this is with both subwoofers combined with EQ applied to knock down that peak at 20 hertz. So it's smoother overall and I've still got response down to 8 hertz, which is also what I got with the D212s. At the time of this video, a single D15 sells for $49.95. You're probably thinking that this is way too much for a single subwoofer, and for some folks it is. But this has got some of the best build quality of any subwoofers that I've tested. And more importantly, you can hear right off the bat the difference in bass quality if you're coming from a lesser quality subwoofer. As I've said earlier, you can immediately feel how much pressurization these can put in your body. It's such a palpable feeling that other subwoofers can't reproduce. That being said, I have compared it to Perlison's own D212. That one does cost more, has dual 12s, and is a bigger subwoofer. I felt the biggest difference between the two was that the 212 seemed to be a speedier sub, which I'd probably pick for a dual purpose home theater slash music system. Not that the D15s were slow, it's just I know that some folks want to know the difference between the two. And this is me just being nitpicky. If I've never heard the 212s, then the D15s would probably be one of the punchiest 15s I've heard. It's right there with some of the smaller 10 inch subs that I've got. The big thing for me is the amount of clean impact and for my space, I'm getting single digit response. And this is all in a very manageable size. I've had bigger subwoofers in here that couldn't touch the D15s. And let's not forget, it's got a very customizable feature set, which will make it a breeze to blend in with any setup. With that said, if you're itching for a new subwoofer that's super clean and will shake your insides, the D15 might be your end game sub or it could be your gateway to something bigger. So what are your thoughts on these Perlison subwoofers? Have you heard them and do you think there's something better? Leave a comment down below and let us know. As always guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like this video if you found it useful and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you again in the next video.